In this short video, I'll be showing you how to respond to the map skills part of the IGCSE Cambridge Geography uh, March 2022 paper two question. How you can use this video? Well, this video will show you how to complete this, these particular questions in the exam. It will offer you hints and tips on how to approach these questions. So my advice, with these, if you have the exam paper in front of you, follow complete at the same time, and then have a go at doing another pass question. So just to recap what the map skills question involve, it's 20 marks out of possible 60, it's compulsory. You are, I would recommend spending about 30 minutes completing it. And although most questions tend to be about settlements, maybe some rivers, you know, they can also throw in from topics as well, other topics as well, such as coastal tourism. Now, various equipment that you will need for your exam, a tractor to work out bearings, a ruler for distances and useful for the six figure grid reference. A pencil to draw the cross section and maybe to mark on the map the various figures and lines that you might be, have to refer to. A rubber in case you make a mistake and for maybe distances, a calculator. Now before starting the exam, I recommend that you draw this onto your map. A compass with the various bearings and the direction. This would be very useful when answering couple of questions. So make sure you obviously start off north and south, east and west, northwest, southeast, northeast, southwest. Now for the bearings in between, these are quite simple to work out. You always start off with the main direction, so north, south, east or west, and then you bolt on either northeast, depending where you need to go. So for the one in between north and northeast, it'd be north, northeast, between north and northwest, North, northwest. At the bottom, again, between south and southeast, south, southeast, and between south and southwest, south, southwest. Now, for the ones between northeast and east, for example, well, start off with east, then you're going southeast, so east, southeast, or west, southwest, east, northeast, or west, northwest. Quite hard to remember, but try and learn this off by heart because again, it's very useful and you'll see some of the questions that you do actually need to give quite a specific bearing. And before you start answering the questions, it's always good to uh, circle, highlight, identify the scale and the difference between the various contour lines. So remember, on this particular map, uh, the scale is 1 to 25,000, which means that in, uh, for every one centimetre on the map is 25,000 centimetres in real life or one centimetre on the map is 250 metres. Another common scale is one centimetre on the map is 50,000 centimetres in real life, or one centimetre on the map is 500 metres in real life. So once you identify the scale, and you can see that here, it's always good then to look in the key or elsewhere on the map to see if you can identify uh, the contour lines and the contour line intervals. So here, when they're really close together, you can see they're five metres, and when there aren't many, they are 10 metres apart. So once you've got those two things, then you can start answering the question. So typically the first questions in most map skills, in the most of the map skills questions are to, you've got to extract from, them, from the map and you have to identify various features and land uses. And maybe, as in this case, uh, a contour line, the height of a contour line. Now the first thing to remember, that the dimensions on your exam paper is are exactly the same as the dimensions on the map extract. So for example, um, if you see here, we're looking at these three squares. They are both 10, they are both 12 centimeters on each map. So that's really important to know in terms of scale, if you're calculating distances and things like that. Oh, and in this particular case, the six figure good reference. So once you've done that, I would actually draw figure 1.1, the box of figure 1.1 onto the map to help you focus your attention. And then once you've done that, circle the various features that you have to identify. And let's continue. The first question asks you to identify feature A, which is in this case is uh, semi. So you have to find out what that is. That's a general feature. We look into the key and we can see here S C E M Y means a symmetry. So feature A, I'm going to put as symmetry. Okay, and so feature B, as you can see there, what is the type of a road? So the clue is the road. So I'm going to look onto the key and I'm going to find where it says roads and paths. Okay, so I'm going to go for a thick road. And so it's probably going to be a dual carriageway because it's nice and thick and it reflects the one in the key. So I'm going to put that as my answer. 
Okay, the land use at sea. So again, this looks like some green vegetation. So I'm going to look onto the key and you can see some coniferous trees. And I'm going to put that in there. Next one, we're looking at heights. It says the height above sea level of the contour at D. So I'm looking at the contour line. That's another little clue. And if I look very closely, I can see, right, we've got, we've got them labelled on here. So if I follow that contour line, it takes me up there. And I say, oh, look, it's 15 metres. So I'm going to put 15 as my answer. And then for the final one, I'm looking at feature E. And it's that little, uh, it appears to be a green diamond. So again here, I'm going to find the green diamond. I've got this part of the key here, and it looks like some sort of recreational route. So again, I'm going to put that into my uh, answer. And when I reflect and look at the mark scheme, here we go. So the first one, cemetery is correct, George Carriageway, coniferous tree, 15 meters and recreational routes. So you can see, take it nice and simple. You look at what, the, uh, what they're asking you to look for. So in this case, an II type of roads, and that helps you to identify which part of the key you need to look at. OK, so a very typical map skills question to ask is asking you to give the six figure reference of a particular feature. In this case, the railway station at F. And so we're, in this case, we're not looking for the six figure of the actual letter F. We are wanting to find the center of that circle. So we find the feature. In this case, I'm going to use figure 1.1 because it's, it's been marked on the actual figure. And so there's less confusion. I've got more help. And remember, like I said, the dimensions of, um, of the figure are exactly the same as on the map. So first of all, I'm going to work out the four figure grid, grid square, and that's always the bottom left hand corner of the square the feature is in. So 32, 30. Now for, this, uh, for the six figure, I need to find the third and sixth number. So for uh, six figure reference, remember four millimeters equals one point because the scale is one centimeter in real life is 250 meters and a grid square is four centimeters. So in total, that's 40 millimeters. But the, figure, the sixth figure needs to be at 10, the third and sixth point. So I divide that by 10. So that means four millimeters is one point for the sixth figure grid reference. So for 32, I'm going to get my ruler out. Remember, four centimeters. F comes to about 1.8 centimeters. I'm going to divide that by four. So it gives me an answer of about 4.5 centimeters. I'm going to round up to write five. And do exactly the same again. So I need to find the sixth number. And remember that for six figure reference, four millimeters equals one point because of the scale of our map. Put my ruler up against the size. Where it comes across, we come to about 3.3, 3.4 centimeters. If I divide that by four, I get 8.25. So I'm going to put eight next to my 30. And my answer will be 325308. Check out the mark scheme. There we go. As well, another common map skills question that typically comes up is you calculating a distance, and that could either be a straight line or, in this particular case, following a particular track. And in this question, we need to follow the railway. So, I need to check the scale. One centimetre on the map is uh, 25,000 centimetres in real life, or 250 metres. So, four centimetres equals one kilometre, and that's really important when I'm looking at the options here. First off, I'm going to circle the start and end point, and then I'm going to divide up that route into as many straight parts as possible. So I've marked these three straight parts here. I'm going to take out my ruler and I'm going to measure the first one. So the first track, we can put 1.6 centimetres. I move on to the second, come about six centimetres. And to the third and final one, we come up to about 1.1 centimetres. Add them together, I get 8.6 centimetres. And then I'm going to times that by 250, and that gives me my answer of 2,150 meters, which is one of the options. And I'm going to tick that. Check my work in smart scheme. Fantastic. So again, this is a question. If it's straight line distance, nice and easy. If not, clearly circle the start and end points. Divide it up into as many straight parts as possible, but obviously don't go over the top. Measure them. Use the scale. Okay, again, typically if you're working out the distance between two points, you might be asked to work out the bearings and direction as well. Um, but this, in this paper, you just need to work out the bearing. So, get your handy protractor out. We need to work out the bearing from station, from the start point at F to the end point there. And that's really important when working out the bearings. So, the, from the start point, you draw a little north arrow. 
and that's where and we draw a straight line, maybe faint line towards the end point. Remember, I asked you at the start to draw on a compass with the bearings. And so if I get my protractor, I put naught there over north and I measure it up to the line. I should get a bearing of about nine degrees. Look at the mark scheme. Fantastic. So remember, have a clear understanding of where the start end is. The start is always where you draw the north arrow from going up towards the top of the map. And so that helps you clearly identify the bearings. Now these series of questions are perhaps the hardest one, and that's where you have to identify various features along the cross section, label features, and complete a cross section. So let's just take it nice and straightforward. Now remember that any dimensions that appear in your exam paper are exactly the same as what they appear on the map. So the first thing I would do on the map is draw the straight line of that cross section. And you can see I've done that there in the map below, that orange line. Just double check. Yep, as you can see here, the distances are the same. So I'm doing this along a 10 centimeter um, line. Now to work out X, simply you put naught at the start of the, um, on the uh, Y axis on the far left, measure the distance across, and we should get about 5.3 centimeters. And so when I go back onto here, 5.3 centimeters on my map is a secondary road. So I'm gonna mark that on there. Checking the mark scheme, brilliant secondary road. Now in this question, we need to do the reverse of the previous question. So on the map, I'm gonna find out where um, the coastal path is. I'm gonna measure it where it crosses the line drawn on the map that I'd put on. And I measured that at 1.3 centimeters. And then take my ruler, I put it up against the left hand Y axis and I measure across 1.3 centimeters and I mark on the coastal path. And when I check the mark scheme, it says here path label at 12 to 15 millimeters from the left margin. And that's something you should always do when approaching these questions is always start from the left. And if we check, yep, fantastic. Let's move on to the hardest question. So here you have to complete the cross section. So again, I remember the start is what is the contour line interval? In this case, we have, if it's very close together, they're every five meters, if slightly far apart, 10 meters. This is now the hardest question, part of the question for you to complete this cross section. So again, go back to the key, look at the, what the contour line interval was, and we're talking five or 10 meters. We now need to start off by looking at where this black line ends. Take my ruler out and it ends at 6.5 centimeters. Once I've put my six point, the ruler onto the map, 6.5, um, centimeters has a contour line of 130. I go to the end point and I can see there's a spot height that tells me the height of that land is at 128 meters. And what I want to do is mark on every single time uh, that identify every time that the um, that line drawn on the map crosses a contour line. So before drawing, I can look at the contour lines and I can see that actually the land rises to a point, the highest point being 145 meters, at eight centimeters, and then steadily declines again to uh, 128, that spot height at 10 meters. What I'm gonna do just to prove that is just get a, uh, next time it crosses a whole bar, like a, a, a hundred, in this case, 130. And so at 6.9 centimeters, I can see that it crosses 130 meters, eight centimeters, 140, and at 10 centimeters, one, two, eight. So I'm gonna mark on those three points and then connect the dots. I will rub it out to make sure it's a nice smooth line. And so I check the land, if I check the mark scheme, it says land rising, then falling. Yep, mine does. And there's a summit of 140 to 150 meters. So this is where knowledge of contour lines and what they show and how to represent height matters. If you're not sure, check out my other videos where I go through that and um, practice. Now, a common question might be asking you to identify three tourist services or three tourist attractions found along in it within an area. So just to recap and what definitions of tourist services are, they are like shops, facilities, infrastructure being built to support the tourism industry. Or, and what do you mean by tourist attractions? Really, they are what is there that might encourage people to visit. So in this case, are they physical tourist attractions such as beach and mountains, or are they human tourist attractions such as churches and museums? So if you look at the key, Actually, it's very helpful that there's tourism and leisure information here. So we've got all these different features and then there might be some other things like public access and various footpaths and things like that. Okay, so remember I have that definition of something that might encourage people to visit. So if I look at the map, I can see there's things like the nice viewpoints. We've got a war memorial, we've got the beach, some sort of hotels, um, a footpath, 
and a golf club. Well, there's actually several golf clubs. So my answer, I can simply put, there are many attractions along the South Bay coastline. There is the Coastal Path, the Marine Hotel, and the Royal Shroom Golf Hotel. And as you notice, I've actually used some map evidence here. If look at the mark scheme, it says things like, okay, you mentioned the golf course, yes. The Coastal Path, yes. And we have the um, hotels, so all correct. Another question is asking you uh, to identify the physical natural features of the coastline shown on the map. So remember, you only write what you can see. You cannot see waves, you cannot see tides unless marked on, you certainly cannot see water currents. So natural features are things like landforms, such as mudflats, wave cut platforms, bays, coves, headlands, spits, past on bolos, deltas, cliffs, caves, arch taxes and stumps, beaches, and things like that. Human features of what we have built, so such as harbors and ports, coastal defenses, such as groins, offshore breakwaters, seawalls, and artificial islands. And remember, it's only what you can see. So if we go back to this, so if we go to the question, let's do some circling first. So I can see, with a little bit of help from my um, key, that there are two bays. So there are two bays called North and South Bay. And remember, I have included the uh, names there in case of map evidence. Sometimes you get credited for that. And obviously, anywhere between two bays tends to be a headland. And on that headland, we can see through the key, there are some cliffs. So I'm going to write that as well. In the bays, there are wide and sandy beaches with some shingle in the north. Yep. And throughout the bay, rock outcrops or possible stacks can be found, such as mill rock at uh, 314325 and seal rock at 318298. You could say they're stumps as well. But for this, because they're rocks, they're sticking out of the water and it's tidal, I reckon it's, uh, they're probably stacks. So if I check my mark scheme. Yep, here we go. Nice and straightforward. Everything we there, we mentioned about the bays, we've talked about the headlands, the cliffs. We've talked about the wide and sandy beaches with some shingle in the north. And then we've got uh, the rock outcrops, possible stacks. Nice and straightforward, identify its natural features, think about what I can see on the map that's natural, and then write about it, if possible, with a little bit of map evidence. Thank you for watching, I hope you found it useful. Please do leave any feedback in the comments. And just remember, before we go, draw in any boxes or lines from the figures from the exam paper onto the A3 map. That helps you focus what you need to do. Draw on a compass with the bearings before you start the exam. Identify the scale and contour line interval and take it slowly. And of course, practice.